Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and this is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code every morning before we go out and fight the good fight. You can catch the EIA every day at 9 a.m. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I'm really excited about today's video. Today, I'm going to be walking you through a scenario of bonding an above ground pool. Remember, never repeat anything in these videos, just use them for educational purposes only. So I'm going to walk you through as if I walk up to this, walked up to this pool, let's assume that we've done all the pre-work and everything in this pool is required to be bonded that I'm going to bond today. All right, so sometimes you may run into certain components that are you know, completely plastic or don't need to be bonded, but we've deemed everything that I'm about to bond that it is required to be bonded. Bonded. All right, so I walk up to the scenario and I start with my number eight copper conductor and let's say I start right here at the heater. So I start here at the heater and I dig my trench from, you know, I hook up to the lug at the heater and I dig a trench underground going over to the pump and then I attach onto the lug that's at the pump. Then I'm going to head over here and I'm going to start my grid bonding. So I go from the pump and I make my first tap point on the side uh, frame of the pool. Then I continue up with my spider web. So I go, remember I'm in between 18 and 24 inches out and I'm four to six inches below the subgrade. And then from this point, this red ring right here, let me get my pointer. This red ring right here is our five foot mark. So our fence falls within the five foot. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to tap it. And I'm going to use listed approved lugs and methods for tapping. Then I'm going to come back down and I'm going to spider web out, heading on to my next point of my four points. Then I'm going to come over here to my third point. And while I'm here, I'm going to bond my metal ladder. Now we in this situation are deeming that this metal ladder um, is sufficient enough to bond the pool water. Okay, it's in contact with it. We're going to say that this one is fixed and cannot be moved because the whatever you use for the water bond has to be in contact with the water at all times. We're going to say in this scenario that this ladder is permanently bolted to the ground and cannot be removed from the pool. If that were not the case, then you're going to install a water bond fitting right here. Somewhere in this circulatory system, you're going to set it where uh, it's always in contact with the water so it won't be affected by the backwash and... Um, you're going to install a pool bond fitting there. All right, so then from there, after I bond that, we are going to continue our grid. Now, in a normal scenario, as long as the water's bonded and you've bonded everything else in this scenario, then, then you could be done. Now, another thing that you can do, and I, I have to recommend that you don't do anything in these videos, but in the NEC does not require this, is you can put a ring around the heater pump and a ring around the pump. And the practical reason for that would be, you know, so say if you're standing right here and you're backwashing this pool or if you're adjusting the heater, you know, you got your shoes off, you're wet, you just got out of the pool. If you were standing right here anywhere in this area, you would be in, you know, in the equipotential bond. But what if you were over here adjusting the heater or what if you were over here backwashing the pump had we not made these two rings? So, you know, it's just something to think about that if I go ahead and make a ring around all this right here, I'm bringing it all to the same potential. So no matter where I'm standing working on this pump, you know, there's no less danger of being shocked right here or no less or no more than there is right here. So if I'm standing over here, you know, I'm at the same danger as if I was standing right here. So having the equipotential bond out here is something to consider. Like I said, it's not an NEC requirement. And remember, the number one thing that you have to remember about these when you're dealing with pools is you have to have it inspected. It's the cheapest insurance you'll ever have. You could miss something. You could forget something. And pools are super serious. So make sure you have this inspected. Make sure, you know, it's legal for you to do it. And uh, we're not going to talk about prices or anything today because these are kind of a hard job to price. But maybe I'll be able to make a video for that in the future. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And this is how you would walk through a very basic, very simple above ground pool bonding. And tomorrow we're going to jump in, uh, you know, underground pool bonding. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, let's get out here and fight the good fight today. Remember, what you're doing does matter. You're saving lives. You're changing the world. You're fighting the good fight. Let's get out here. Let's stick together, and let's get to it today. Whew! Let's get to it.